Today, friends, we're going to explore Tinkercad SimLab Tracers, so let's get cracking. Friends, if you've never used Tinkercad before, you can get there by using Tinkercad.com. I always choose sign in with Google. This is the homepage. Notice we can now learn physics with traces and graphs. Let me show you how to do it. The first step is hit create and we're going to choose a 3D design. This is the Tinkercad workspace we build with solids and right here is how we name files. Let's name this Tracer 101. When we click down here, it is complete. It saves to the cloud so everything we build will be stored. I am right click dragging to change the view. You can also click on the view cube. There is front, there is a corner. You'll see me mention those every once in a while. Right now I want the world to be larger. So I'm gonna click down here on settings and we are gonna change this to 500 by 500. You do need to backspace. So I'm gonna click and backspace. And then when we click out here, it becomes permanent. That gives us more room to play. So right here are the basic building shapes. Let's hit home so we're sure that it's facing the right way and let's bring out the wedge. All you do is drag it into space. If we look at it from a corner, you can see that it has three rotation handles, one, two, and three. I want it to be facing this word work plane. Notice I zoomed out. So we're gonna grab this handle and if we stay close, it moves 22 and a half degrees at a time. We want to move it 180 degrees, just like that. If you move the mouse away, it goes one degree at a time. If you hold down shift, it moves 45 degrees at a time, which makes it even easier. We're going to click on this shape and we're going to stretch it. I'm going to tell you the number we want is 80. And then I'm going to tell you that the distance we want back is 60. Notice I grabbed the black handle because it goes one direction at a time. If you use the white handles, it goes two directions at a time. If you ever make a mistake, you can do Control Z to undo. I said I wanted this to be 60, so I'm going to click the little box, type 60, and press Enter. The height is currently 20. We are going to change that to 25 just so you can see how it works. Let's real quickly bust out a cool tool called the ruler. We are going to set it down close to that edge, click on the shape, and then if we zoom in and look, you can see our measurements 80 by 60 by 25. And you can see the little green line here where it gives us the distance from the ruler. We want that to be zero and press enter. And then I got lucky and this one already was zero. That was not intentional, that was just luck. Now I do wanna raise this up with this cone. Right now you can see over here, it says 14. I'm going to collapse this window so we've got a better view of it. I'm going to tell you that we want to make this 35 above the work plane, just like that. Now I'm going to look at it from this top edge and click on the X to dismiss the ruler. Real quickly, let's switch to something called flat view and let's look at our project from the top. I'm going to zoom out so I can see more. Notice you can do the minus and we're going to use the arrow keys to nudge this. If you hold down shift, it nudges 10 times as fast. We want to get it back close to this edge. If we switch to perspective view, you can see now there is an angle. We could have used that shadow to gauge it, but when you switch to flat view, it makes it real easy for you to see exactly where you are, especially when you combine it with the views right here. Once again, back to perspective view, and let's get the next part of our project started. We are going to add spheres and let them roll. We need to uncollapse and bring a sphere out and set it up near the top. This is called cruising. It drops right on that spot. I'm going to use F to fit view so it zooms in on it. And at the moment, it is 20 per side. I want you to hold shift and squeeze it down. And I'm going to tell you to set it at size 7. If you miss and have eight, just type seven, and it'll snap them all to the same size. This is the basis of our project. Let me show you how it works. If we go to SimLab, I'm gonna click home so we can see everything. Notice I do have to zoom out and pan so that we can see it the way we want. I'm gonna click on the blue one, and I don't want it to move. We can do that by choosing Make Static. I'm going to click on this object right here and notice it is currently the material plastic. I like that, 
but I'm going to pick a different color and I want to turn on the trace shape tool. Now we could add tracers down here, but for today's project, we're simply going to trace the shape. At this point, when you hit play, you can see the ball rolls off and it bounces three times. We could back up and rewatch this so you can see it happen. You can zoom in, zoom out, change the angle, and you can analyze how that material or that shape interacts with Tinkercad. This is how SimLab works. Right now, though, we are going to upgrade this by adding many more materials. Let's real quickly hit Reset Scene, and let's go back to the Build area, and let me show you how we add the other materials. We're going to simply click on our initial sphere and do Control D, use the arrow keys to nudge it across. When you see a gap, let go and do Control D again and again until you have a total of five spheres. This is going to be what we start with. You'll add more later. I am going to show you right now that you can use that black handle to squeeze it so that it fits perfectly. We're going to go back to SimLab now. And we're going to click on each of these items. Notice because we already set the tracer, it is already selected. And we're just going to pick the next material. This is concrete. I'm going to change the color to a gray because that makes a little bit more sense. I'm going to also use ice. I like to make it a blue. I think that looks pretty icy. And then let's switch this material to polystyrene. I'm going to make it a white and then finally, the last one that we're going to do at this moment is rubber. And I'm going to choose it to a black color because that just makes sense for rubber. Friends, this is where it gets cool. We can now hit play and we've got the data for all the different items. If we back up, you can ask yourself questions like which one lands first. If you look at it now, we can see that the ice hit quite a bit earlier than the other objects. The slowest one to fall was polystyrene. You can spin and look at it from every angle. You can see which one gets the best bounce. At this moment, it looks like it is the ice that jumps higher, although polystyrene comes really, really close to the same height as ice. These are the kinds of things you can learn by playing with this project. If we hit reset, we can grab all the items and we can lift it up a little bit higher. Currently it was 25. Look at this. Now we are raising it up. I'm going to put it up near 50, just like that. If we hit play one more time, we have got a different reaction from the spheres. I'm going to hit pause. Once again, we can always back up with the slider and double check what's happening. There is more though, check it out. If we click right here on the trace graph, we can actually get data from the project. So right here at one second, we can see the velocity for every item. You can also switch and check anything else. Here we can check the acceleration of each as they fall. Do notice there are a ton of options as you explore what is happening in your design. All right, at this time, I'm going to tell you to reset. I'm going to tell you to go back to the main building area. And I want you to continue these until you've got them all tested. Stretch this out to whatever number you think is right. I'm going to go somewhere out in the 120s. Click on your shape and do Control D. Use your arrow keys to nudge it till there's a gap and then do Control D again. I just did a quick count. And after rubber, there are four more. And then you can click on this and adjust it back to the correct size. And then simply return and change each material to test how they turn out. Don't forget, after you pick them, pick a color that makes them more fun. That looks like a Super Bowl to me. And of course, once you get them all changed, hit play to check out how it turns out. I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to leave it for you to explore and learn from. Once you've completed that, I'm going to give you one more challenge. Return to the build area, bring out a cube, stretch it out, make sure it is longer than the project, and change its height to two millimeters thick. Make sure it is underneath the project. I'll show you this real quickly. If you select those two shapes, choose a line, you can click on the blue one and make it the boss and hit the middle so that they line up just like that. 
This is going to be a little bit of fun. We're going to change its materials. I'm going to first make it brown. And then we're going to go to the Sim Lab. With the same settings up here, we're going to change that material to hardwood. I do not want to track this shape. Notice we do not have to track everything. I'm also not going to make it static. I'm going to let it move if it needs to. And now with a different landing material and all the different spheres, check it out. We get different reactions to the materials. How cool is that? And of course, now I'm hoping that you have fun exploring different landing materials, different heights, and learn more about Tinkercad and the awesome new SimLab tracers. So there you have it, simple steps to get started using Tinkercad SimLab tracers. Of course, you'll make my day if you take time to add comments telling me what you learned and what kind of things you found out while doing this project. I do also want to say thank you to everybody that's supporting me via Patreon. And of course, friends, don't forget every time you hit that like button, add a comment, or share a video with a friend, you're helping the channel grow, which absolutely makes my day. Of course, have a glorious day and keep tinkering. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. Of course, I've got the page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. If you scroll down just a little bit more, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days. It is hosted on cadclass.org. If you check this video, it explains all about it. And if you check the bottom, you will find a coupon code 25HL Tinkercad. It will get you 25% off any course on the site. Of course, you can visit the site by simply clicking the link. Friends, of course, I do want to remind you about the sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget to absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.